Dear ladies and gentlemen, good morning everyone and welcome to quarterly webinar for AUGA Group. Today NASDAQ Vilnius is hosted by CEO of the company Kastutis Yushchus and CFO of the company Martinas Repechka. Uh, before we proceed with the presentation, I will shortly introduce you with the agenda. Firstly, Mr. Yushis will comment Auga Group financial results and inform about current events in the company. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. Mr. Yushis, I invite you to start the presentation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am actually first time in my life uh, speaking in, on webinar. It's great uh, that we have so much uh, attendances and I um, want to present first, first of all from a short uh, introduction of our financial results and uh, most of them we are in detail are presented later in our financial management reports which everybody can read it on our and published on our um, website. Uh, in shortly, our revenues uh, of first quarter of 2019 uh, was 14.9 million euros uh, versus 11.5 million euros. Uh, I just shortly want to uh, explain uh, to everyone uh, financial uh, who wants to look on these financials that our revenues, uh, a lot of uh, impact of our revenues is coming actually also from uh, uh, previous sales of our crops from last year. So it's just not that uh, revenues is always reflecting real uh, activity of the company. Uh, gross profit uh, from last uh, last first quarter, uh, we, we, we got uh, three, 3 million euros versus 1.7 million euros in 2018. Uh, EBITDA is 3.4 million euros versus 1.6 in, in uh, 2018. And uh, here, also net profit is 0 0.2 million euros versus uh, 0 0.6 million euros in 2018. Uh, about the gross profit EBITDA net profit, it's also important uh, to mention for everyone that it's strongly affected by new IFRS uh, 16 uh, standard, uh, whereas these numbers are impacted uh, by uh, special requirements related to the leasing of our leasing uh, activity and uh, but uh, this uh, this actually things you can read carefully is was like uh, explained it in uh, in financial results uh, and you can you can read in details it's uh, it's uh, actually we wants to saving time uh, to leave you more time for answering your questions so um the crop growing segment, this is actually our main uh, EBITDA margin uh, generating activity here in company. And uh, this is, uh, I want to introduce you what's happening on our main, uh, main activity here. So uh, we actually already finished it, uh, already uh, our 2019 season, 18-19 uh, season, uh, all the drilling and seeding. And uh, we have uh, 38.7, 38.6 thousand hectares. Uh, it's very very similar amount uh, of 2000 uh, last previous season, and uh, also it's very very equal amount of uh, cash crops. We, we call it cash crops because we this is this is 28.7 uh, uh, thousand of cash crops, uh, and 28.5 thousand this was in 2017-18 season. Uh, we call it cash crops because we these crops are produced uh, strictly for sale, and um, the forage crops, uh, uh, which is actually uh, this year um, uh, 8.9 thousand uh, hectares, uh, and previous season it was 9 thousand hectares. Is we are used for our animals, uh, animals feeding, and. Um, and uh, this is also a very similar number from last uh, previous seasons. Um, from the cash crops, uh, we have a split of 11.4 thousand of uh, winter wheat, and uh, sorry, 11, 11, 
11,000 winter wheat, um, uh, and in total is 11.4 in wheat, uh, 8,000 uh, hectares of legumes, and 9.3 thousand of other cash crops. Uh, it's important to mention uh, that um, that uh, the winter uh, crops, uh, which we see that last uh, previous season, uh, was very good favorable, favorable conditions for, for seeding uh, and uh, it's opposite of, uh, in, uh, of the previous season 2017-18 when this was very, very bad uh, season for, for seeding and we, we can't reach uh, high numbers. This year uh, it's, uh, it's very good, it uh, was the, uh, conditions for soil preparation and uh, also it was mild winter and uh, winter crops it looks uh, really good and um, we had uh, also in Lithuania here uh, uh, quite a quite a dry spring and um, this dry spring uh, actually creates some challenges uh, uh, for for germination of uh, some crops but uh, we have uh, enough rain uh, last uh, last two or three weeks and uh, it's actually solved to this uh, what are uh, let's say dry dryness to shortages uh, quite uh, quite okay and uh, it's also important to mention that with uh, weather conditions, uh, because we started using uh, uh, mintil technology on most of our fields, it's 85% of land is already cultivated on our mintil technology. This technology allows you to keep this moisture in the soil, and uh, and you don't uh, you don't you be working only on on small five six centimeters uh, soil horizont, and uh, in spring uh, when it's dry spring you don't uh, turning uh, around the big uh, amount of soil, and you don't we're not drying out the soil. And it allows to keep uh, more moisture in the soil, natural soil, which is always exist uh, after winter. So, um, so the weed control and uh, and uh, the spring weeds also, what we see that this year is also germinated already quite well. And uh, weed control actually, which is very important, also item in. Uh, in uh, in our organic farming, uh, it's also done effectively, and um, and the crops are well protected from uh, from uh, from weed uh, pressure and so on. So, in general, we can say that uh, conditions of uh, winter and uh, summer crops are good, and uh, we expect uh, quite uh, we are quite optimist uh, optim optimized on 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 the, on the coming crops. Uh, and uh, we will present uh, also partly of our crops uh, forecast in the next slides, uh, and uh, you can you can hear about our estimations also in numbers, uh, which will be presented by 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 Martina Srepečka or CFO. Thank you, Kastutis, and good morning to everyone. Um, I would like yeah, to to discuss one important change in fair value estimation of crops uh, that Kestutis was already mentioning. And in previous years, uh, fair value of crops was estimated as production cost until the actual harvest. Uh, since the effect of changes in fair value of biological assets at, at the point of harvest is becoming more and more important and significant, and management of the group decided to estimate uh, the value of crops with uh, some additional inputs and, uh, and assumptions to give investors a better understanding on evolving harvest trends uh, before the actual harvest. So the group estimated the fair value of uh, winter crops uh, at the end of March of 2019 using formula which is uh, provided in, in this slide here. It is. And the actual cost inquired are adjusted uh, on the portion of expected uh, profit or loss from the uh, particular crop uh, based on specific assumptions. And this uh, portion of this uh, profit or loss uh, is uh, equal to time already passed from sowing date until the planned uh, harvest date. For example, winter wheat uh, uh, was uh, seeded uh, at the uh, at the end of September of 2018, and preliminary harvest date is at the end of August of 2019. So the whole uh, growing cycle takes up 11 months, and at the end of March, um, 
six months were already passed so or or in other words uh, 54 percent of the whole uh, growing cycle and that number was used in estimation uh, as parameter t yeah? and uh, for instance if assumptions other assumptions would not change in the coming quarter additional portion of profit um, would be recorded to re uh, to reflect additional time passed uh, for instance in wheat to wheat uh, case and uh, since estimations uh, are based on forecast adjustment parameter for an expect, unexpected nev negative effects on the harvest is included in the formula as well and this uh, it's called x parameter yeah? uh, and the estimated fair value of winter crops uh, at the end of march of 2019 is higher than the acquired cost by 1.3 million and this difference was uh, accounted and as again in fair value change uh, of uh, biological assets in financial statements it is important to have in mind that uh, summer crops uh, seeding was still in the process at the report at the end of the reporting period and no significant uh, biological transformation was present and uh, that is why uh, production costs uh, of these crops was used uh, as a fair value indicator instead and the formula discussed uh, will be used to estimate fair value of uh, crops uh, in coming quarters as well, uh, both for winter crops and summer crops, uh, until the actual harvest will be completed. In each quarterly estimation, forecasted uh, parameters will be adjusted if needed, or if already available, uh, actual data will be used. And it should be noted that um, in case of forage crop, uh, even at the point of harvest, the uh, fair value of forage crop is um, estimated or measured at production cost. And this is done because um, there is no active market for forage crops and there is no reliable data to calculate my market price of these uh, crops. So uh, as a result, uh, the production cost is uh, used as measure of fair value. and. Um, and that is why uh, in all cases uh, uh, revaluation resu result uh, of uh, the forage crops is uh, equal to zero and gross profit of uh, uh, crop growing segment was uh, 3.2 uh, million euro in 2000 in the first quarter of 2019 and uh, one uh, versus 1.8 million in the first quarter of 2018 now I would like to switch to crop grow, uh, to mushroom growing segment. Sorry, and uh, revenue from of mushroom growing segment was uh, 6.6 .6 million for the uh, three quarters of two, uh, three uh, three months of 2019, and that is uh, 12 uh, 12 percent higher compared to the same period as in 2018, and revenue from mushroom sales uh, increased by almost uh, 900,000 euros, while revenues from mushroom seedbed, uh, seedbed sales decreased by uh, 160,000 euros. Mushroom sales revenue increase uh, relates both uh, to increased volumes of mushrooms sold and the average sales prices. And the uh, volume increased by uh, 4% uh, of total mushroom, uh, by 4% uh, of mushrooms sold. And uh, the share of organic mushrooms uh, was uh, around 7.3% uh, or slightly lower compared to the previous year. And the share of organic mushrooms uh, slightly declined, declined because there is a shortage of uh, fresh mush uh, mushrooms in the market. And a uh, lot of organic mushrooms, uh, which uh, previously was sold to uh, processors uh, during uh, the first quarter of 2019, was sold as fresh, uh, fresh non-organic uh, mushrooms. And serving uh, a fresh market is priority to the group due to better prices and purpose to keep a strong relations with the clients. And uh, since prices of fresh mushrooms are higher than those uh, sold to processors, increased share of um, fresh mushrooms in total sales also had a positive impact on average prices. Both organic and non-organic average prices increased. And it is important to mention that uh, list prices were also successfully increased to major clients uh, to reflect the uh, increasing uh, production costs. And it as it was uh, uh, mentioned in our annual report, uh, uh, a new R&D project uh, 
is is implemented in a mushroom growing segment which should help us to reduce labor costs or the need of labor in mushroom growing process and this should reduce or stable help us to stabilize cross the changes cost changes in mushroom growing segment and the total cost of sales of mushroom growing segment was 6.4 uh, million in the first quarter of 2019 or 7000 euros uh, 700000 euros uh, higher compared to the same period in 2018 and the gross profit of mushroom growing segment remained uh, almost at the same level as in in 2018 as in 2018 and now i would like to uh, comment the diary segment results and diary segment sales revenue for the first quarter of 2019 reached uh, 2.6 million and was uh, around 14% um, higher compared to the previous year. And increased uh, tonnage of milk sold and uh, increased average price uh, both contributed to increased sales revenue. Uh, the amount of milk sold uh, increased pro from uh, 5.8 thousand tons uh, in 2018 to 6.2 thousand tons uh, in 2019. And volume increased uh, is related to increased uh, average yield per cow. And uh, increase in milk yields uh, per cow relates to changes in, uh, com in the feedstock mix. And this change in feedstock mix uh, was done only at the end of um, last year or at the end of 2018. So uh, better yields uh, should, uh, should be seen in the coming quarters as well compared to the previous year. And the uh, group expects that uh, combined, uh, combined feedstock production plant uh, that will uh, come into operation uh, soon will contribute to, to yield increases in even more. Average price of milk sold was around 388 euros per ton in the first quarter of 2019, or 13% higher compared to the previous year. And the share of organic of milk sold at organic prices was around 54% in 2019, and was significantly higher compared to the same period in 2018 when it was around 20%. Of course, as it can be seen from uh, this graph, uh, that um, the share of milk sold at organic prices uh, remains uh, very fluctuant. Uh, there is a lot of fluctuations in the in the share, and because uh, sales are still dependent on several important clients and their business needs in particular month, and uh, of course the group is aiming to have more device, diversified client portfolio to. Uh, have more stable milk sales on a monthly basis. And uh, uh, an important area for improvement of uh, diary segment financial results uh, remain losses from revaluation of animal herd. Yeah, it, it can be seen here. And the main source of losses uh, comes, uh, comes from meat sales, as, as it was uh, discussed in, in, in the previous webinars and in financial statements. Um, or, and this is the difference between an animal growing costs uh, inquired by the group and uh, the meat uh, market value. And uh, the management expects that investments into animal welfare should uh, help to reduce these losses as animal production lifespan will be longer and um, uh, part of these investments into animal welfare well, uh, were already implemented during the first uh, quarter of uh, 2019. Okay, so uh, I follow, thank you Martina, so I follow now on the our important sector, which is quite uh, quite still is small in our uh, portfolio, but it's the most growing sector in um, in in our group. So um, uh, the the sales of uh, end users products, which we call it, uh, is preserved mushrooms, mushrooms, vegetables, and soups, uh, packed vegetables, bottle milk, and milkshakes eggs and packed poultry products and other end users consumers products uh, it was 58 percent higher versus last uh, the quarter of 2018 so 
the costs uh, are proportionally also higher. This is uh, approximately 63% uh, higher the cost of 2019 versus 2018. So we finish it with gross profit is not uh, not huge only on uh, only on uh, 43,000 euros, but uh, we keep it uh, we keep it growing uh, next quarters because uh, our sales uh, in the in this segment is still is makes uh, it's growing and uh, with uh, the faster numbers uh, uh, like it was uh, in previous or historically. So why we play, we we expect uh, where we, where there are areas where we want uh, uh, where we want to 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 go, to move our sales in which areas so uh, first of all um, we had um, uh, we, ne we, ne we not yet sold nothing uh, to to the one of the largest uh, probably the largest market in the in the world the United States market uh, because our products was not certificated by a federal uh, FDA certi certification which is actually a special certificates allowed in, uh, uh, to import to United States and recently United States FDA registration for our retail and user products was finished and it opened wide opportunities to export our best seller subcategories to the largest organic market in the world but uh, first contracts are already under execution uh, we have several customers in this market and uh, products uh, should reach customers uh, in third quarter already of this year so it's important also to mention that um, uh, our company is already on the process of getting a Chinese organic certificate for our dairy and preserved products. Um, uh, Chinese uh, organic certificates, um, uh, it's quite special uh, because uh, it must be um, certificated from, for example, uh, for all the production value chain. So that means from every cow uh, farm uh, till till processor of uh, milk, and uh, it takes uh, it's this process is quite complicated. But uh, our company can handle this uh, complicated process, and we expect that we will finish this uh, this certification on the third quarter of this year. Uh, China actually is one of the markets which is actually really loves imported goods. So opposite of uh, the European markets, uh, which loves uh, first of all to buy from local suppliers. And uh, opening this market, uh, it allows us to, to first of all to switch our uh, milk processing uh, milk products uh, to get the certificated uh, organic certificates allows us not only to sell our end users products but also to sell to the processors which are actually prepared to buy uh, organic milk if we will have organic uh, certificates of uh, origin uh, Chinese origin uh, organic certificates uh, so this uh, this uh, this uh, this actually main movements it helps us uh, uh, to move in new uh, big uh, areas but uh, our steady growth of existing markets and uh, portfolio and uh, orders from our existing markets also makes uh, makes uh, positive uh, positive growth so we are quite optimistic of, about this uh, this uh, sector and uh, we think that it uh, will create uh, a lot of opportunities in the company next uh, uh, next quarters. Um, uh, so it's uh, when we're talking about organic. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, it's always related uh, with uh, with. Uh, the products which are with good uh, uh, animals welfare with good uh, practices on uh, on uh, on the healthy or uh, healthy food but also good practices on uh, on soil uh, on soil uh, management so uh, in total uh, consumers are becoming more demanding uh, demanding and it is important not only that for food is organic but minimizing environmental impact in production process as well uh, there are many many researches which shows that consumers when choosing products are increasingly focusing on also on corporate social policies and a good government practice all this makes uh, up the concept of sustainable business 
and um, if you call it uh, like uh, organic, uh, there is there is a lot of producers who produce already organic uh, organic food, uh, but but not uh, there are not many uh, who can claim uh, their products uh, on sustainable uh, sustainable claim and. Uh, uh, sustainability in our company and uh, from beginning is integral part of Gauga Group vision and business model, of course. After successful implementation of secondary public offering uh, last uh, last uh, year and attracting investments to sustainable business development, the company has further focused on the fundamental changes in the development of their chosen business models. We are actually working on uh, on the implementation of biomethane uh, to our practices. We uh, our research developing department works also on the prototyping uh, first uh, biomethane driven tractor which we're working together with uh, uh, local and international companies and uh, the technician universities and uh, uh, we believe uh, that in, uh, that we can uh, with, uh, we can create a technology which makes times less uh, co2 footprint uh, from product from the production of um, uh, from production of uh, food, and uh, we can change this uh, this uh, this uh, farming model not only good uh, for healthy food for for humans, but also good uh, good way to to make it uh, for to save our planet and. Uh, and actually, uh, we believe that uh, that there is a lot of uh, customers uh, worldwide, and uh, the new the new, how to say, responsible consumers uh, trends, uh, where uh, we believe that uh, we will willing to buy uh, more or choose between uh, another products if uh, these uh, products will be produced in different way or a more sustainable way, uh, and uh, it leads uh, for our companies. Uh, uh, much uh, higher possibilities to also to sell products on the international markets. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, we are actually also our sustainability work is also already uh, accepted and let's say and uh, and uh, seen in, in, in the whole wild uh, uh, areas and uh, our close cycle uh, farmer model uh, uh, got the award from uh, European Bank of Research and Reconstruction, and uh, we got Sustainable Energy Gold Award, and uh, it was presented in uh, annual meeting of Business Forum in Sarajevo. And, and uh, we also received uh, awards not only from international but for local, let's say, Baltic uh, states uh, uh, researchers, and this, in this case, uh, yeah, the young researchers from uh, the students from uh, from the Stockholm School of Economics in Riga, and we found that the Tauga model uh, of, it is one of the best uh, sustainable practices in this Baltics and we got a word of uh, for sustainable business model including close and loop organic farming mental approach and strategic focus on biomethane applications so we're glad that um, we have nice uh, shareholder structure at the moment and uh, there are many investors who invested uh, in our company and uh, we, we believe in our uh, long uh, long term strategy and um, uh, I, I believe uh, also that we can do amazing things in future and uh, everybody will be happy with the participation in our community. Thank you very much for the presentation and now we can proceed with the questions. And I would like still to remind you that you can send those uh, in the section on the right side of the screen. And the first qu uh, question is the following. What is the current situation with bank covenants? When do you expect that you will comply with it and when you will be able to renew your CapEx program? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I will answer it. And the uh, uh, current situation is uh, with the financial covenants as is that uh, we are not uh, breaching any covenants uh, because uh, as we, it was uh, mentioned in our previous financial statements that 
uh, covenants were changed uh, in agreement with the uh, major creditors and uh, now only equity ratio covenant is uh, applied and we are uh, compliant with this uh, covenant and debt EBITDA ratio uh, covenant is not um, applied until the uh, for, uh, third quarter of 2019 when let's say new harvest uh, results uh, uh, should be uh, should be seen in in full scope and then then the covenant will come into place once again and uh, one more uh, uh, additional comment uh, because uh, application of efrs uh, uh, 16 also it had an impact on our financial results and financial ratios but uh, as we have mentioned in our interim financial statements uh, that uh, it is uh, there is an agreement with the with the with the banks that uh, financial covenants uh, uh, throughout 2019 should be calculated uh, as if uh, uh, eliminating the uh, effect of efrs uh, 16 and um, about this uh, capex program uh, it is uh, an agreement with the banks that uh, as soon as uh, results uh, uh, this year harvest results will, will will be seen we'll come back uh, with the banks uh, uh, to negotiations about uh, uh, financing program and uh, of course the uh, capex program is uh, one of these uh, the, the scope of of the whole negotiation so we expect uh, uh, that limit there will be uh, uh, no limitations or or the limit will be much higher for 2020 and the second question is the following uh, what is the current net debt position of the company Uh, as uh, I have mentioned that uh, yeah, uh, if uh, in application of uh, IFRS uh, 16 uh, had uh, let's say an impact on on, on financial liabilities uh, section of of the company in the balance sheet. Uh, so um, if we are talking about um, uh, financial debt uh, eliminating. Uh, uh, these uh, additional financial uh, liabilities uh, that uh, that came into the uh, into action after impl implication of uh, ufrs 16 the additional liabilities uh, came uh, 30 uh, 35 uh, uh, million euros so um, without uh, this uh, uh, so uh, calculating net liabilities uh, as, as far as I, we understand this uh, we should eliminate this and uh, and net debt is uh, around uh, 54 million if if i'm not uh, mistaken i i, I should uh, yeah, double check this but it's uh, more or less on 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 this level thank you very much for the answer one more question has arrived how you calculate factor x uh, in winter crops fair value formula Yeah, this factor is uh, not calculated. It's uh, just uh, the assumption of, of the management uh, uh, performing this uh, uh, estimation of a value. Just just uh, um, an assumption. Of how is uh, let's say uh, to to evaluate possible uh, possible negative impact uh, in, in the coming uh, quarters? It's just an assumption. No no estimations here. Yeah, it's 10% uh, uh, was made an assumption uh, estimating the fair value of winter crops in the first quarter of 2019. Thank you very much. We received one more question. In case of forage crops, how profit is being calculated in this segment? as you actually mentioned that there is no market prices. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I uh, understood uh, the question correctly, but um, uh, uh, talking about forage crops, uh, uh, the profit, uh, uh, there is no profit uh, in, in talking about the uh, forage crop uh, evaluating uh, crop growing segment results. Because because um, uh, 
even as I mentioned, even at the point of harvest, uh, uh, the fair value of um, forage crops uh, is equal to co production cost. So the profit is always zero. Of course, uh, then uh, the cost uh, of fair value of uh, forage crops uh, has an effect of uh, on uh, on uh, dairy segment results and the cost of uh, milk and cost of uh, uh, growing uh, and animal growing costs. So if uh, let's say costs. Uh, of forage crops are higher, uh, for instance, as, as it was in, in the previous two seasons in 2017 and 2018, when when the yields of uh, forage crops were low and, and that cost, of course, uh, cost per ton of forage crop um, increase. So uh, increased uh, cost of forage crops uh, has a negative impact on dairy segment results and, and of course, on, on total group results. But um, Talking about the crop growing segment results, uh, uh, the impact from forage crop is always uh, zero. Thank you very much for your answers so far. And currently, we're waiting for more questions. Uh, one more clarification question. Uh, do I understand correctly that all forage crops harvest is being used for dairy segment and you don't sell anything outside the company? Yes, talking about um, uh, forage crops, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, we, uh, uh, in general talking, uh, yes, we use uh, forage crops only for feeding of our dairy segment, and uh, we do not sell uh, forage crops outside uh, our group. Uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 talking about corn, yeah, the corn can be, let's say, uh, used as uh, corn silage, uh, then, then of course it's uh, not sold uh, uh, outside our organization. But if we succeed to uh, grow uh, corn uh, grain, uh, then of course corn grain uh, uh, has market and it could be, uh, it can be sold. Uh, uh, outside organization and of course then uh, then we book it uh, or we, then we we uh, we see it as as a cash crop and we uh, of course evaluate then uh, corn grain at, at market value and the profit or loss uh, is estimated and uh, one more uh, one additional comment is that uh, of course uh, uh, the amount of forage crops that uh, we grow and uh, we have it has an impact on the amount of uh, cash crops uh, that we are able to uh, sell uh, to third parties because uh, let's see if uh, for, uh, the quality or amount of forage crop is not uh, sufficient then we have to supplement uh, our feed uh, feed stock with with the cash crops for instance legumes and so on to uh, to increase um, uh, increase quality of, of, of the feed, yeah, so so it uh, has uh, not a direct, the direct effect on on, on uh, cash crops, but it, it has. Yeah. Thank you. Um, maybe may I uh, also ask you, from other companies we heard uh, a lot that uh, uh, FIRS 16 impacted very much the results of companies this year. So maybe you would like to comment a little bit also on that. Yes, uh, yes, it's a very good uh, question, and uh, of course, uh, if uh, application of EFRS 16 had uh, definitely had a significant impact uh, on our, uh, I would say, first of all, balance sheet uh, position, uh, and of course, uh, on financial results because. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, all all let's say the impacts and and changes uh, are disclosed in our financial statements. But I would like to to co comment several uh, important aspects. One is that um, as I have already mentioned that uh, our uh, financial uh, our liabilities or leasing liabilities uh, actually increased by uh, by around uh, 35 million euros uh, due to that uh, that operational leases now are booked uh, to the balance sheet uh, and since uh, we lease uh, a lot of uh, uh, agricultural land all these uh, uh, operational leases now 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 are uh, evaluated in our balance sheet and the uh, other aspect is uh, that uh, 
uh, in pre uh, while these leases while operational uh, leases uh, costs uh, were were let's say uh, included in, uh, um, inclu of co included in cost of goods uh, sold and um, of course uh, they were included in EBITDA uh, calculation and now uh, these uh, costs are um, changed to to depreciation of right to use assets costs uh, and interest costs and uh, this uh, had a um, uh, positive impact on, uh, on our EBITDA uh, if, if we are calculating EBITDA evaluating uh, uh, IFRS 16 effect. So that is why we are publishing uh, now uh, two EBITDA calculations, uh, evaluating IFRS uh, effect and uh, uh, excluding uh, this effect. And uh, uh, excluding effect, uh, EBITDA is uh, 3.4 million. And if we evaluate uh, IFRS 16 effect, uh, EBITDA would be uh, 4.6 million euros. Uh, and it is important to mention that um, actual uh, total costs uh, actually increased by uh, 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 almost uh, 500,000 uh, 500, euros because uh, uh, depreciation plus uh, interest costs uh, are higher due to technical calculation details uh, uh, than, than uh, it would be uh, these operational leasing costs uh, if uh, if RS16 were not uh, uh, were not uh, uh, implemented so our net uh, profit result uh, is actually by a half a million lower than it could be if uh, without the if for a 16 effect but of course this uh, this uh, cost increase is not monetary and it's not related to uh, cash uh, movements Thank you very much for your comment. Okay, it seems that all questions are answered. A record of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel webinar playlist and on the website of the companies uh, auga.lt. Uh, dear gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for your presentations and for answers given. And participants, thank you for joining. See you next time.